What a beautiful day is today to be coming to you from up here in my sewing room. I'm sat at my desk which has had a long overdue spring clean today so everything's looking nice and shiny and fresh. It's just lovely to be up here. And you might notice that my light has had a bit of a revamp. Um, I did have an old angle poise lamp but the clamp on it was not very reliable so whenever I wanted to move the lamp it just was not a good idea because it felt like it was going to fall over. I got an email a couple of weeks ago from Sirius Lights and they asked if I'd like to try out one of their lights and of course the timing was perfect so I said yes please. Um, they let me choose which kind of light I would like to try um, and I went for uh, a desk lamp. You can also get floor lamps which have the same uh, like bendy neck so you can angle it wherever you need it so like so um, and I chose the high definition lamp in white with a heavyweight base because I know I'm going to be moving it around a lot. Um, the lamps actually use daylight wavelength, wavelength technologies which means that they replicate the daylight spectrum. So when you're using the light it's the closest thing you're going to get to actual daylight. It's as though you're using actual daylight. So this is going to be really good to be using when I'm doing work such as hand sewing up here at my desk. I usually finish products off that need buttons for example. I'll do that up here um, and it would also be great obviously in the winter when the light is getting uh, lower it's going to be really good to actually feel like I'm in a natural light. So that's really handy. The light itself has got a dimmer as well so you can have it a bit brighter or a bit lower. Um, and it's also got this uh, bit that you can twist here to change the beam so you can have it as a wider spotlight or narrow it down a little bit. So I think this lamp's going to be really helpful for when I'm doing product ph photography, which I do up here in my sewing room. So even on the days when the weather's not great, I think I'm going to be able to get really good light um, to take the pictures, which is fantastic. Um, the people at Serious Lights have actually offered me a, a code that I can pass on to you guys to give you a discount if you'd like to get one for yourself. Uh, the code to use at the checkout is SRM24 and that will give you £100 off your light plus free delivery. I'll put the details down below, I'll put a link to the website and I'll also type the code in again just so that you can um, get it clearly in case you missed it. Um, and another good thing about Serious Lights is that they're made here in the UK, down in England in Aylesbury, so it feels really nice to be able to promote another British business.
Would you believe it? I've actually picked up a whip in this past fortnight since I last videoed. This is my sweater, the sweater cardigan, which is a pattern by Delia Creates. And it's a really comfy, cosy looking um, sort of baggy cardigan, which I really like the look of. Um, I, what have I done? I started to join up seams. So here we have a sleeve. It's drop shoulder, which is why the sleeves don't look very long. Um, and I've also done the body and attached the front sections. So it looks a bit like a waistcoat at the moment, but it will give you a good idea. So I have um, attached these. It's going to get turned inside out or right side out to attach this to no to finish it once i've attached the sleeve so i'll turn it out now because you can see it a bit better without the bulky seams from where i've stitched on the pieces but there you go you get the idea of it and the sleeves are going to go where the sleeves go still got this one to seam up um but you get the idea and then once i've actually got around to doing that well, here actually there's like a cardigan and um, that's the first time i've turned it out and had a proper look but yeah liking that um i've still got to do a button band so i'm going to be going all the way up here and then all the way around the neck and then down the other side i haven't really looked ahead to the instructions so uh i'm not quite sure yeah what i'm doing but the um the maker of the pattern has a website and there's a youtube video on the website showing you each step so that's been really useful i've used that quite a lot um, and it ties in nicely with the written instructions as well. And it comes in lots of different sizes. Um, I'm making, what size am I doing? I think it's the small because with it being so baggy, I thought that, yeah, I'm doing small. And it goes up to, from extra, extra small up to extra, extra large. Um, I know that I'm quite a loose crochet and I just thought once that's had a wash and stuff, it's just going to stretch a lot. But um, yeah, judging by the fit of it in the picture, um, I think I've done fine. And I have tried on the body section and it fits fine. I always felt when I was making it that it looked really big, but it doesn't It doesn't seem too big at all. Um, obviously, it, you can see it's not a fitted cardigan. I mean, the way she's wearing it, she has got it sort of just tucked slightly into her jeans a little bit. Um, and it looks really nice and that's the sort of style that I'd wear and I would just like to point out that I picked green long before Claudia was wearing her green, green jumper that was quite a big thing um, a couple of months ago when she wore a green jumper on the Traitors programme it's a lovely green jumper but it just goes to show that um, yes yeah, a popular colour um, so yeah I just need to muster up the energy to get it finished <laughs> I'm not far off really but um yeah, I, I look at projects like this and I think if I had been sat working on this the past couple of weeks, it would be finished. But I just don't have the motivation sometimes. But um, yeah, seeing it out now and seeing that it actually looks like a cardigan, I hope will give me a bit of motivation to finish it. So I'm pleased with that. It's got this nice ribbed pattern to the body and it's done by crocheting in the back loop only. Normally you'd crochet through both loops. Um, so for this, it's just the back loop. And you get the ribbed effect uh, at the bottom there for the band by using a smaller hook. So that's been quite effective. I think my tension could have been tighter um, and that would have made it look more like a, a ribbed band at the bottom. I don't feel like I've got enough definition between the, the bottom bit and the main body. However, it's a, a beginner project for me, so I don't mind too much. I did try and be a bit more conscious when I moved on to the sleeves. Um, so there's a slight bit more definition there, but not enough. And I think that when I'm wearing this, I might need to do something. I'm not sure what I can do um, to make the sleeves slightly less baggy. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'll wait till it's done. I'm just worried about when it does get a wash, if it's really going to stretch it out a bit and be way too baggy for me. Because I don't want the sleeves to be ridiculously baggy. Um, so if anyone has some advice on that, let me know whether it's I don't know whether you would just put a stitch somewhere or I think maybe you could have I read some with them before about 
um, thread and elastic through to make it a bit stretchier. I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's someone out there who could give me a bit of advice. So yeah, I'm I'm pleased that I've I've picked that up again. The colour looks a little different. It looks very pale on the screen, but it is a really nice deep deep green. Um, and I should say this is a yarn that I'm using. It's the Women's Institute DK. It's acrylic. Um, I'm not sure what colour it's called. If it's got a name, it's just got a number. I bought quite a lot of balls of wool according to the pattern, but I don't think I'm going to need quite as many as I bought. Um, I think I've got, I'll be using this one, but then I'll have another full two left. So yeah, handy to have in stash, I suppose, but um, kind of annoying that I've bought too many, but never mind. And this project is living in my fabric basket, which is one of the things that I've made. And I do sell these in my shop from time to time. And I've got, what have I got here? A wee stitch marker, which has been keeping my stitch. And I've also had another stitch marker somewhere. It's probably attached to the jumper. Um, because when you're working in the rows, like here, I've had a stitch where I stop and change to the smaller needle. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm coming to you from a very different angle today. This is a little corner of my living room that you never see me in. Um, I've got a new chair, a new to me chair, and I'm really happy with it. It's a rather old fashioned looking chair and Joshua's been teasing me endlessly because I look like a little old granny apparently, but I don't care. I'm at that point in life where if I sit the wrong way, my neck and my back and my shoulders don't like it. So I wanted to find a proper chair like this that would keep me sitting upright. And I love it. Look at it. It's got ferns on it. Um, I don't think I could have found a more perfect chair. It's new to me. I got it from Facebook Marketplace. Really cheap considering it's from Next and they retail about £500 and I paid nowhere near that. Um, I got rid of a I have a big armchair. I had a big armchair that sat in front of my window. I don't think you would ever have seen that in a vlog, actually, because it never got used. It had a really low back and it just wasn't comfortable. So I put that on Facebook Marketplace and got rid of it um, and have had a little rejig of things. So I've got this chair over here. My couch is over there. The window's over there. I've got a nice new little pine table that I had um, outside in the summer house. Bought it years ago at a car boot sale with a view to painting it, like painting the legs and having the top varnished, much like this style that I already have in the sitting room. I've got three of these. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do the table in the same way. I've already given it a sand and I went to look out paint and unfortunately it had all dried up. So I'm going to have to get some fresh paint for it. Um, hopefully I'll pick that up. This week um, is chalk paint and then there's another little project and then that will be in my window and... My first thought, of course, is, oh, I could put some plants on that. Plants that would like to be at the window. So, yeah, new level of excitement once you reach my age. A new comfy chair and being able to put your plants in the window. So, yeah, there's been a few little changes around here over the past couple of weeks. We've just gone back to school today from the Easter holidays. Um, It's been a kind of uneventful Easter holidays in that we haven't really done much. Joshua is now 14 and a half doesn't want to do what much with me. We did go out and play pool one day, that was really nice. Um, and just so that I didn't miss out, I took myself off to St Andrews one day.
I had a really nice little trip. It was very windy, but the sun was out and it was almost warm wind. I found an ice cream and um, I went looking around the charity shops, looking for books. Didn't buy anything, didn't see anything to buy, but I had a nice little afternoon out anyway. I've now listed the new fabrics in my shop. These are the Riley Blake ones that I showed in the last video. Most of them have got lovely metallic elements to them and some of them are like rose gold as well, but I think they're just beautiful. Um, I've made some project bags using the fabrics too. So my next job is to get these photographed and then get them in my shop. I've done lots of lovely combinations. Um, I thought I'd give this one a go with the polka dots on the outside just for a change. It's not something that I tend to do actually. The dots would normally be a lining, but I thought it would be fun. And I know some people love polka dots on the outside. So I've made the lovely gold floral, the lining um, and the cuff as well. So you just get a little pop of that one. Um, and the pink dots is the main element. And yeah, I've done a few different combinations. I think they've all turned out really, really pretty. Trying to let that focus. So we've got some with the florals on the inside, some of the floral on the outside. This one's got the lovely rose gold uh, stripe on the inside as well, which I think it's just so nice to have it hidden away inside your bag and you just get a glimpse of it every now and then. And I've teamed two florals together for that one, which I think's turned out really nice. Um, but it's also nice to have a, a floral inside with a more sort of understated outer fabric. Um, I think that combination is just Oh, so beautiful for summer, spring and summer. And then, yeah, another stripe. And I've used the black floral for an outer on that one too. So, yeah, these will be in the shop when you see the video too. These are all the smaller size, which is perfect for like a one skein project, socks or a shawl or mittens or something. Um, there's still some large project bags in my shop from last time as well in the Tilda fabrics. I think the... Storage pouches have all sold out, but I'm going to make a few more of those and I'm also going to use the new fabrics for those. So that'll be nice because um, I have only used these ones for these bags so far. I've not had a play about with them for other stuff, but the metallic linings will be beautiful inside storage pouches. Um, and the crochet hook rolls, yeah, they're still in my shop. Most of them are in the shop as well. Those tend to to be in my shop for a little bit longer but project bags and storage pouches sell out quite quickly so if you would like one then go and snap one up. Oh right I'm a wee drink of my tea. I am trying to get warm. It's the first day in almost a fortnight that has been beautiful and sunny because as soon as the school holidays started, oh it rained, oh boy did it rain, um, but it's chilly today despite being sunny so I've just made a cup of tea, I've got my hot water bottle on my little granny chair, I'll show you my cushion as well actually because it is handmade by me years ago um, but I think it looks really pretty on the chair and it's just a lovely patchworky one. It's very well worn, very well used, but it's absolutely beautiful and I love it. And I love the colours. And again, I just feel like everything in my house goes because it's all my taste. And as soon as you start putting stuff together that you've chosen because you like it, it all goes. So I'm sitting with my hot water bottle behind my back. <laughs> Getting nice and warm. And yeah, having another cup of tea in my pretty, pretty mug. I got this not last year, the year before. It's a Cath Kidson one and I just thought I could just see me sitting on the doorstep for my doorstep cuppas with this mug in the summer or in the spring when it's getting beautiful with all the flowers in the garden. So that's what this mug is all about. As well as the new project bags that are in my shop that are the sock size, the small ones. I have got a few of the larger project bags left as well. There's crochet hook rolls and there's also a couple of notions pouches, the full size ones. Um, I'm just going to grab mine to show you um, what they are like. This is my one, absolutely chock-a-block, full of stuff and there's still room for more. Um, the really handy thing about having the magnetic snap is that even when it's full, it's really easy to get it closed, like it's not a struggle. So yeah, that's the storage pouch. You've got all the pockets up in the top there. 
I've got needles attached to that and a needle minder and then you've got uh, a pocket underneath that and then pockets in here slots in here which is really handy for crochet hooks and I've got a circular in there and I've usually got a pen but I think it's on my pattern so I was marking off my spot and I've attached this is a little um uh, scissors fob but I like having it here attached it onto there um so yeah that is the storage pouches and there are a couple in my shop if you'd like them this is my own one I made it from a Kath Kids, Kath Kids and Tea Towel years ago and just for fun I reused the label that was on it and put it on my pouch. Um, the ones in the shop I think are floral, another stripy one and a bee one at the moment. Um, but my shop is always full of all the other things like the haberdashery, the notions, there's stitch markers, there's lots of journaling and paper crafting supplies as well. It's a real treasure trove and stuff is, stuff is getting added to it all the time so do check that out. Um, I think the last point that I will chat to you about today is what I've been reading because I've really been loving getting back into books. Um, I've always been a reader but over the past few years I just haven't made the same amount of time to read. To me it's more of like a summer holiday thing. If I go on holiday I would read a lot um, but I just, yeah, I just haven't made the time which is silly because I enjoy it. Um, I've been getting loads of recommendations from my viewers so you guys thank you to all of you who've sent me recommendations you know me so well because I've read a few of the books you've suggested now and I love them you were right all along so the last oh I was going to show you the book that I was going to talk about I've given it on to a friend but I finished uh, The Housemaid which um, I know a lot of people have been reading lately. I read that one really quickly. Luckily, it was quite short. I did find it quite difficult to read. It's a psychological thriller, which I haven't really read before. I haven't read that genre before. Um, I'm quite a sensitive kind of person and it, it shook me up a bit. I, I did find it difficult to read. It's not violent or anything like that but I do think it should have like a trigger warning on it there's it was more emotional abuse really and I just found it really it really affected me and I did find that I was going to bed quite unsettled a couple of nights um halfway through the book it does sort of switch a bit and um it settled down a bit um just because of the the way that it changed um so I did enjoy it and I do think that if a book or a film or a TV show leaves you feeling that strongly I think well it must be well written for it to make you feel like that so I, I did enjoy it um, and I would recommend it but it's not going to be for everybody um, yeah I think certain people if you've gone through certain things would not enjoy that kind of book um, and would find it difficult to read but yeah it's a good story it's a clever idea I was guessing all the way through what the outcome is going to be like there's going to be a twist in it somewhere surely so I kept guessing and getting it wrong and getting it right sometimes but um yeah it, it was a good book I know it's a part of uh I think there's like a three-part series because there's other ones for to do with the housemaid I don't think I'm going to read them I don't I, I didn't find it enjoyable just because of the way that it made me feel a bit because it was a psychological thriller so I don't think I'm going to make any rush to read the others if I ever do read them, to be honest. Um, it would make a really good book group book because it, it definitely gets you thinking and could get you talking uh, in a discussion. Um, I then moved on. I got an Ellie Griffiths book, which was recommended to me so many times. Ellie Griffiths is the author. The series is about an archaeologist called Ruth Galloway. Um, I am particularly interested in archaeology and there's a, it's got a crime twist to it as well so it ties in with both. This one is the first book in the series and it's called The Crossing Places. I am really glad that I started at the very beginning because it's as much about uh, the archaeologist's personal life as well as the story so I think if I jumped in somewhere else in the series it would have spoiled it a bit. Um, I got this one from the library and I have since requested the second book. Um, I've finished this one.
really enjoyed it. Um, there was a couple of evenings I was on my own and I didn't even put the TV on. I just sat and read my book and it was so enjoyable. It was lovely. Um, really, really, really enjoyed that. So I would recommend um, this author to you if you are looking for something to read. And yeah, uh, yeah, just enjoyed that one. I have found another three in the charity shop. I don't think they're anywhere soon in the sequence though, so it'll be a while before I can read those, but I thought it's as well just, I'm as well just picking them up when I see them. Um, I was in a charity shop somewhere, I can't remember where now, um, and I saw this one, the Richard Osman. This is the third one in the series of the Thursday Murder Clubs. It's called The Bullet That Missed. Um, so I bought that one and I've started it straight away basically just as a bit of a palette cleanser almost. Um, it's still crime but it comes under the genre called cosy crime. So it's not like properly disturbing or violent or anything like that. It's got a really kind of lovely feel to it which seems strange to describe a book about murder. But anyway, they're really easy to read. Um, Mm, everyone who's said that they've read them has told me they've enjoyed them so yeah I've started this one already I'm just waiting on a couple coming back from the library that, that I've requested so I'll read this in the meantime um, and I've got a little pile of books that I think I've showed already that I can move on to next if I need something else I don't know how to play this Our hands touch once or twice Feeling kind of hypnotised I'm looking at you and I feel the tension You know this could be like heaven I am right here doing my best to make you feel like I do And just for a second You're looking at me making me feel like maybe you want this too Give me your attention Looking at you, I'm trying to get your attention. Can I come close? I don't know how to play this. You know, this could be the it's heaven. been a pretty gloomy week here, and it's school holidays. Joshua has just left for his dad's, and I was just sort of hanging about. And I've had these pictures sitting down here for. Not quite a year, but almost because, oh yeah, it will be a year. My hallway got painted uh, over a year ago and I've been gathering some pictures to put up on the wall. I had this one already and I've, I've acquired these ones over last year and I already had the hello and I already had the hearts. So I just gathered a few things and held them up where I want them to go and have just popped them up on the wall just now. And it was like a five minute job and why I've put it off for so long I don't know but it means that my shoe rack is now empty on the top again so I've brought out um, a few of the things that were on it before such as my little jar here of dried hydrangeas and I've got some of the Dundee marmalade jars here as well these are really um, nice ones they've got very decorative lids um, 
I actually don't live too far from Dundee, so it's quite nice. I know these jars are quite iconic and people collect them all the time and it's nice to put flowers in them and stuff, isn't it? But yeah, these were quite different ones and I spotted these at an antique show and I thought I'm having those and they weren't even very expensive. They were maybe a couple of pounds each. Um, and I have got one of the sort of more standard ones as well. I think that's in the living room. And I've just got a few little beachy finds here. I've got some little uh, fossils. That one's quite cool because you've got the cross sections of crinoids, which are little long sort of cone shaped things, if you can imagine that. So these, this is where they've been cut through the centre and you're getting like a cross section of them. Pretty cool. And then this one has just got bits of everything through it. Really cool. This one's got a bit of a shell uh, imprint in it there. I don't know if it's going to focus very well. You same word for it. You can see the detail of the shell there. And yeah, there's some on the other side. We've got some local beaches where you can find fossils if you're very lucky. So I think these are all local. There's bits in that. I can't quite remember what. There's a little crinoid there. A little long shape. Um, so yeah, they've just been sat there. I don't really know how else to display them. They are just stones after all, but I do like to have them because they're pretty cool. So it's nice to have them there. Um, and I brought a picture down from up the stairs. That was in my sewing room. I did think about putting it up on the wall, but I may just leave it there actually because it's quite a nice sentiment. And um, I think maybe, maybe I will leave the wall for now and see if I want to add any more to it. But I think it's probably fine as it is now. It's just busy enough for me. Um, the print I got online, I've no idea where now, that was years ago. I think I got a lot from Freya Art, she's on Etsy. I think, I'm not sure she's even around anymore. These frames I painted myself and then just scuffed them a bit to give them a shabby chic look. I love that one. I'm saying them plural, but it's only that one that I've painted like that. I think I've got one, it's either in the sitting room or upstairs. Um, got that years ago from maybe somewhere like Tiger or Primark actually. These posters, or this poster was from Etsy I think, an Ikea frame. These frames, this frame, um, I did show in a vlog last year that I painted some frames with some of the hallway paint um, and that's one of those ones, that colour of paint matches the paint going up my stairs and the artwork in that was um, a giveaway that I won from, oh, I've forgotten her name. I'll put it on the screen if I can remember it, but it says come as you are. Um, and then that one I found in Home Sense and really liked it. It's got a bit of a celestial theme, which I've got going up my stairs as well. So I thought it ties in with that quite nicely. And the butterfly ties in nicely with all the flowers as well. These hearts, I've no idea where I got them. They're kind of a, I don't know, Primark or Home Sense or something years ago. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how that's come together and I like the fact it's all like upcycled or a couple of cheap new things um, and using stuff that I've got. So happy with that, love the colours. Um, I need to think of what I want to do on this wall though because it's just a big empty space above the radiator. I did have a big picture up there, it was like a beachy scene but I, I don't think it goes now with what I've got there so maybe leave it blank for a bit and see if I get any inspiration. This is a little mushroom growing kit. I got it for Christmas and I just remembered to sort it out a couple of weeks ago. So it's been sat, had to sit somewhere warm. So it's been sitting in the air and cupboard. And I've just got it out to have a wee look and I've just given it a wee spray of water. So it will look a little bit wet, but I think we're getting some teeny tiny mushrooms coming. Very cute. It, it, it smells very mushroomy. There's definitely lots of little ones there so that's quite good the packet says you should be able to harvest maybe like two or three times so that'll be exciting back up the drive a bit could you see what this is this is a part of it all over and um. And I think that's you caught up basically with the past couple of weeks. It has been a couple of weeks since I've vlogged and I've had a couple of messages from people 
saying that they've missed the vlogs and is one coming out soon so it's nice to know that I've been missed but I, I was here in the background just didn't quite have the motivation to get on with it but now that school's gone back I feel like I'm going to get back into working mode and um, get back up in the sewing room now that it's had a nice little clean and a tidy um, I'm also itching to get out in the garden now that it's dry enough because there's loads of little jobs that I just haven't had the chance to do anyway I think I'll sign off here um, take care and thank you for watching and I will see you next time